Okay, ready to go? Hey everybody, so today we're gonna talk you through making the wallet from last week's video. So in last week's video, we talked through how we design wallets and the response was great. Uh, thank you so much for all the kind words. So today we're gonna make this out of leather and talk you through everything that we do. Um, the first thing we need to do is cut out the pattern. Now, if you aren't gonna make a pattern, um, we threw this one up on the website uh, for a couple bucks. If you wanna make along with us, you can download it and print it right at home. And otherwise, we have to get this cut out and then we'll get into the leather. Okay, so once you have your pattern cut out, um, if I have a symmetrical pattern, I tend to only cut out one piece of each because you can just kind of flip it and this is fine to use on both sides. It just saves paper and stuff. Um, and so this is the leather we're going to use. This is just a natural veg tan from Herman Oak. Uh, Weaver carries it in a bunch of different weights. So we're going to use the two three ounce. Um, so the next step is to take our pattern pieces and we're going to trace them out and cut them out on um, out of the leather. So I'm just using uh, just a scratch all, as you can see it there, um, to trace the, the pattern onto the leather. You can use like pencils and stuff. Um, if you're going to do that, I would suggest tracing on the back of the leather. Um, with a wallet like this, when you make bags and stuff like that, you can use more marking tools because you're going to be hiding a lot of the seams. With this, if you get pen like a little bit over, it's probably going to end up showing. So I always use a scratch all. Um, and you know, basically just, you can butt up the seams here, um, and then it's just one cut, you have no waste in between. And so we're gonna just trace the rest of these onto here, and then we'll cut them out. Okay, so to cut leather like this, which is a little bit heavier than, um, like an upholstery leather, I like to use a corkback ruler. That's really important, you wanna make sure that you have a corkback ruler, because um, metal rulers without cork will slip and you can cut yourself. And then I use a number two exacto. I like it because it's really flexible and I'm really not that great at sharpening blades. Um, most people will use, you can use rotary tools. Th there's a bunch of different stuff you can use to cut. Everyone's a little bit different and it also depends on the material you're cutting, how heavy the leather is. For this style of work, um, I like the flexibility of this blade. Um, and so with, we're going to cut this out now, which should be fairly easy since a lot of it was straight shapes. So when we go to cut, you're going to see here, um, I've lined up, pretty, because it's a pretty straight pattern, I'm able to butt everything up, so there's really not going to be any waste. Um, and that's just kind of an efficiency you save on leather. It also saves on time. You only have to make one cut to get two seams. So we're going to go through this, and we're going to cut, and all I'm doing is lining up my ruler um, and the cork back. Again, it really helps you from not slipping. And I'm just making straight cuts here, nice and simple. If you can't get it through with one pass, don't worry. Um, you can make multiple passes. And just remember that a dull blade is much more dangerous than a sharp blade. So whatever you're cutting with, make sure it's nice and sharp and take your time. Um, this pattern specifically, if you're working with this pattern, it's really simple straight cuts, really good for a beginner. Um, but it's also really good for just a simple project. And we'll just finish this one last cut here. You can have a little fun and try to cut freehand if you want as well. That If you get good at that, that really speeds up your process a bit. And once we're done with that, now we'll finish off the tops of these pockets before we get sewing. All right, so now that we have all the pieces cut out, we can kind of lay everything out and start to get our order of assembly going. And the reason this is important is because we need to figure out how we need to burnish things, and burnishing is just finishing off um, the top raw edges of stuff. So I think what we're going to do first is we need to attach the small pockets to the big pockets, which means that we need to finish off just this side first, and we're going to get that done right now. So you can go as crazy as you want with finishing off these edges. Um, this is a single piece. Uh, you can use a, an edge beveler if you want along this to round the edges. For this, because it's simple, um, save a little bit of time on the video, I'm just going to show you how to sand down and burnish, do a quick, a quick burnish. So I'm going to take some sandpaper. Um, this is, I don't know the grit, I think it's probably around 180, and I'm just going to lightly sort of sand down um, this edge. And what I'm doing here, I want to just round that maybe a little bit so it's not a sharp corner, and just make sure everything's nice and even. Then. This is like 400 grit, it's, you know, it's, it's pretty smooth. And I'll just take that and kind of maybe even do a slight 
bevel just with the sandpaper, but be careful because you don't want to scratch the actual grain of the leather itself. Um, and this is good, you know, edges are something that you can glass them up, you can spend hours on them, you can paint them. Uh, this is kind of a good utilitarian, seal them up, they look nice, but you're not spending um, a ton of time on every single seam, uh, which is nice when you're, when you're just getting started, you can pump out some projects and, and start getting better with your construction. So this is, it doesn't come in this, but this is a gum trag canth. I don't think I've ever said that word out loud. We call it gum trag. Um, I'm just going to take a little bit on my finger and just apply it to the edge. You don't want to soak this, you just want a little bit. It's uh, almost like you're applying chapstick or something. Um, and then what I do is I kind of let it get a little bit tacky. And I'm going to use this little piece of canvas, it's just a little bag. And you're just going to kind of burnish. And you'll feel it kind of starts out tacky, but then it slicks down. And you're kind of just feeling for that. And you'll find that when it starts to feel really slick, I don't know if you can see it on camera, but it'll start to shine up, and that's when you know you have a good burnish. Then after that, if you want, this is just beeswax um, that Kaylina's mom actually, from Kaylina's mom's bees. And we'll just apply a little bit of that on there as well. And what that does is the, the grain of the leather is pretty sealed. If you oil it and it gets wet, no big deal, but here you have open fiber. So if you just burnish it, it's pretty good protection, but if you add some beeswax, it, um, you're adding a secondary layer there, and it stays on for a long time. It's not something that you really need to redo often. Now we're gonna glue the small pocket onto the big pocket so that we can stitch the inner seam. Um, so I'm gonna put these here, and the way that we're gonna do this is, we're gonna use, this is uh, contact cement, this is Weldwood. Uh, we like to use barge, but we always run out, and this is what the hardware store buys carries. These are also really nice if you're not doing a lot of projects because the small container, it doesn't dry up as quick. Mm -hmm. um, if you have a big container you're not going to use. So I'm going to take my scratch all here and I'm going to lay out my pockets. And all I'm going to do is kind of make a mark a little below the seam on both sides. And this is going to tell me where to glue up to because with contact cement you want to glue on both sides. So I'm just going to do that real quick. And just a little bit below, make sure that you'll never see the mark, because it'll be hidden in the seam. Um, so when you're gluing, uh, it's really simple. You're just going to apply the glue. Uh, you don't have to overdo it, you just need a little bit. Uh, a lot of people will use like a little squeegee as well. Um, they sell those. Those are really helpful for some people. The big thing with this glue is that um, you have to wait for it to dry completely almost. You don't really want it to be, you definitely don't want it to be wet. You don't want it to be tacky really. I let it dry till it's pretty much dry to the touch. And that's how you get the best bond. Um, oftentimes I'll find we'll get a bunch of, we'll get messages that say, you know, uh, the glue, I have contact cement and it, it just doesn't work, I have to clamp it together. If you're having to use like alligator clips to, specifically with this glue, you're pretty much doing it wrong. Um, you want it to dry completely um, before you put the two pieces together. Okay, so um, our glue's dry now, and this is to give you an idea. So you see how I'm touching it, and it's not, it's not really tacky. That's what you want. So the next thing we do is we're just gonna we're just gonna line this up um, with the edges. You kind of you can not really pay attention to that little mark you made now. That was just for the glue up, and we're gonna line this up as best we can. And then what I like to do is. Um, I'll press it down with my fingers and then I'll use a hammer. You want to make sure that whatever you use has a very clean polished face so that you're not going to dent or mark the leather at all. And you're just going to go through and tap. And what that does is it sets the glue. So now, um, you know, we, we have a little flap here because we didn't glue all the way to the end, but the rest of this is really set. And if you glue a little bit over, where your stitch line is. You can go through and use a bone folder at the end. Once this is all stitched, we'll go in and we'll loosen up that glue and we'll be good to go and cards will fit perfect. Okay, so if we go to our go back to our interior body piece and we put the pieces that we just glued, we can look at it and we can see, okay, well, once I attach these pieces, I'm not gonna be able to sew this seam. So these are the seams we have to sew first. That means that we have another edge to finish. Now, some people will just sand it down, stitch it, and then finish it. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna finish this edge completely before I stitch it. And we're gonna start, um, you can use if you have one of uh, Weaver Cells, the tabletop sander, if you have that, or any other sort of belt sander, you can use that. But it's real, also really easy to just do on your bench top. 
Um, this is just, I think it's the same 180 grit sandpaper. And I'm just gonna take the seam that we're stitching, put it flat down, and just back and forth. And all you're doing is leveling. Um, and once we do this, then we're gonna go through, and now that we have a couple layers built up, we're gonna bevel it as well. So we're gonna use a size zero beveler. Um, I like the size zero for pretty much everything. I know a lot of people use, don't even consider this a beveler because it takes off so little. But I don't really like to completely round over the edges. I just like to take off the sort of mushrooming flare out. And you can see that I like the, about the zero is that it handles these multiple layers, but it's delicate enough that you can come in and you can do, when you have like a single layer of two or three ounce leather, you can take off just that edge without really digging into the leather. Of course, you do need to be careful, but they're really simple, and if you keep them sharp, they work for a real long time, too. So after we've beveled these edges, I'm pretty much going to do the same thing as we did with the tops of these pockets. I'm going to take a lighter sandpaper, around 400 grit, and just kind of take off the edge to, to round, further round this seam here. And after that, it's going to be the same thing. Gum trag, canvas, a little bit of beeswax, and we're going to be good to go to stitch this little seam here. So we're going to use our calipers to mark our stitch line, and what this is going to do is give us a straight line to run our stitching chisels down. When I have a small area like this, when I have something um, that's going to butt up to another stitch line, I like to lay out all of the stitch lines in the area, because that way I know if I want to bring this stitch line all the way down to meet this, I can do that. I haven't, um, when I made the pattern, I didn't calculate this length for my spitching, uh, stitching spacing, so I don't really want to meet up with this because I don't know if it's going to be perfect. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay down a stitch line, but I'm going to stop. I'm going to give myself like, that's about a quarter inch of gap. And what that means is that when I stitch this, I'm not going to meet up with this stitch line. I'm going to leave it a little open. And so that way that, you know, if there's, if the stitching spacing isn't perfect, we're not going to have like little tiny stitches here that look kind of weird. It's just going to, we're going to land that last stitch wherever we can. And um, it'll, we won't need to worry about this because we're not meeting up with it. So with stitching, um, we're going to use five millimeter stitching chisels. Uh, we always like the Weaver ones. Um, they're a really good value. They're really strong for um, for the price, and they always leave a nice crisp uh, stitch line. You can think about it this way. Um, I like to pair the thread that I'm going to use with the size of my stitching iron. So if I'm using a thinner thread, I can use a higher SPI. I like to use kind of thick thread, so I like to use a little bit of a bigger SPI because I think it looks a little bit more balanced than if you're just trying to cram a ton of stitches of pretty thick thread into a small space. So with that being said, for this project we're going to use, Weaver just expanded their line of Ritza Tiger thread. We're going to use the 0.6 millimeter, um, and so we're going to pair that with the 5 millimeter spacing on the stitching iron. You can do this a few different ways. What I like to do is, I like to lay out my stitch line a little bit, and I'll just make little tiny marks. I always go one stitch over so that the pocket locks in, and then I can kind of just barely see these marks here. And I do that because because we didn't calculate this angle, or um, this seam, we want to make sure that we're going to be able to put our holes where we want. And now if I were to land this here and it was all the way down here, I could move it up a little bit because I have a little wiggle room, um, and you would be able to stitch over this and you wouldn't see these marks. Luckily, I think if we mark this out a little bit, we can see that our stitch line is going to end right at the end of our mark, which is perfect. So I'm using, uh, I don't remember the weight, but I'm using a Berry King Mall, and we're going to punch this little stitch line, and then we're going to punch this little stitch line. Um, and so we're just now going to stitch up these stitch lines. Now, saddle stitching, we're going to make a whole video about it. Um, so do it whatever way you're comfortable with. If you want to use a stitching pony, we don't use a stitching pony, which is what a lot of people ask about. Um, but if you want to use a stitching pony, if you want to go out and back, there are tons of different ways. If you're on a machine, just sew up that little seam right there. And we're going to stitch these up, and then we'll get into the rest of the assembly. So 
stuff's so nice. Alright, so our next step we're going to, now that we have these stitched, we're going to assemble the whole interior. So it's pretty much more the same at this point. Um, we're going to mark a little after the seam here for where we're going to glue up to. And then we're going to just glue this, let it dry, and then assemble it. And then after we do that, we're going to go through and we'll mark our stitching lines. We're only going to self that across the top before we um, attach this to the exterior, which will make the whole bifold wallet. So I've glued this, I've done any trimming that I needed to do, and now we're going to look at the construction of the whole bifold, right? So you have, this is the interior, I call this the interior shell, but this is the whole interior assembly, and it's going to get attached to the exterior here. So we're going to end up attaching this seam together, and then there's going to be a little gap so that it can close, and then we're going to attach this seam together. The only seam we're not attaching together is the top seam, so that means that we need to sew this seam across the whole top of this piece. Now, you can sew this, stop here, pick up here, and sew this, or you can just sew straight across. I'm just going to go straight across, it'll look nice and clean, it'll just be one stitch line. So we're going to use our calipers again, and we're going to go right here, and we're going to bring this all the way across here. And that way, we know when we bring it up to the block to punch, we're going to go all across the entire thing. So for a seam like this where you have a few different layers and it goes down and up again, I like to bring out the whole set of chisels. Um, one of the ways that you can make it look like everything lines up is that you might have to hide a couple smaller stitches. Because this might this length might not be perfect including lining up these steps for whatever spacing that you're using. So what I'll do is, again, I'll go through and mark some stuff. I like to mark the two seams, so this is going to be marked here. And again, just with hand pressure, you're making little tiny marks so that if you have to move anything, once you stitch, these marks will be hidden, you'll never see them. So I usually mark the corners and any seams that are going to overlap, meaning like right here, because you don't want a stitch landing and splitting that, you want it to go over it. And you can go over it, you know, you have maybe an eighth of an inch of wiggle room. I always start with kind of lining it up as tight as possible. Then I can go in with one of the other chisels and I'll just kind of, this happens to be three quarters of an inch and it fits perfect, we can mark it there. And you can go through if you want, you can mark out all of your holes and it's a little, you don't really have to commit. And so you can see right here, this is a perfect example. I have this going all the way from the corner, but on my last step, we have a stitch line from here landing in the middle of these two stitch lines. So I'm going to take this, I'm going to step this back maybe one, two, three stitches. And what I'm going to do is, personally, this is how I do it. I'm going to kind of free, uh, freehand an even amount of stitches in here so that when we stitch everything up, they will be a different spacing from the five millimeter, but when you're looking at it, you're not really gonna see it. Then you can go in with your stitching chisels and you can punch all these out. I like to start with the biggest one that I'm gonna use first, kind of get what I can done and then work my way down. Um, and that's important because the longer your stitching chisel that you're using, the straighter, the more you're guaranteed a straight line. So if you do everything with a two prong, your line's going to look a little bit wiggly. If you can get away with, um, you know, a six prong or a four prong, you're more apt to have a nice straight crisp line. And then we're going to stitch all the way across in one go. Um, if you want, you can do it in halves. If it's too long of a stitch line for you, that's cool. Um, but this isn't uh, super long, so I'm just going to do it all in one go and then back stitch on one end. And once we have this stitch across the top, like all the other seams, we have to do something about this edge because we're going to need to burnish this now before we put the whole wall together. For that, we're going to use Weaver's Benchtop Sander. Um, we have it. It's a really good time saver if you're doing a lot of wallets. If you're not, you can just do what we did before. You can put your piece of 
sandpaper down on the workbench and just plane it out and then bevel it. Uh, for me, this is what we're going to use. And so the cool thing about this machine is it not only has the sanding drum, but it also has um, a burnishing area too that spins at the same time. So honestly, we've used it, both of us at the same time, one sanding and one burnishing. If you do a lot of work, um, it saves a lot of time. So all we're going to do is, just like everything else, but with a machine this time, we're going to put some gum drag on the edges, let it tack up, and then we're going to go from big to small burnishing Okay, now to wax things, if you're waxing a bunch of stuff, you know, it, it gets kind of cumbersome to just take every single individual piece and do this if you're doing a bunch of stuff and you're using a machine like this. So what we do is um, we just turn it on and we use one of the notches, usually the big one because we never make anything this big, um, and we apply wax in here. And I'll show you kind of, I don't know how you're going to be able to hear me, but we'll give it a go. So you're going to apply the wax just like this so it sticks in this ridge. And there was already some in there, but you can see how now this is all covered in wax. So when I turn it on again, I can run this edge right down here and it's going to distribute wax. And then we just use this specific one. You don't want to use all of them because you don't want wax in the grooves that you're burnishing raw leather with. Um, it'll work, but it gets a little weird. Uh, I'm going to run this edge down the wax first and then I'm going to polish it with this. And it seems like a small thing if you're only making one piece. Honestly, you don't need a giant machine to do this if you're only making one piece. But if you're making multiples or you really value your time, you want to get stuff done quick, um, this is a really good tip for that. And so we have our interior pretty much done. The other thing I did was I took our exterior piece and I sewed across the top of that. I did line the inside as well so that when these two are together, you'll look and you'll see a nice finished uh, grain. But you don't have to do that if you want, if you don't want to. So the next step is we need to, I'm going to punch the holes first on both of these pieces and we're going to glue these together and sew up the bifold into a totally finished piece. Because I like to punch the inside and the outside separately and then when we glue them together we'll make sure the holes line up so that when we sew we have fresh lines. Now if you're using um, a single awl in a stitching pony, you don't need to do this, but the reason that I do this is if we were to glue these together and then punch, this is really, really thick. So if you don't have your stitching chisel completely straight and you're at a, even a little bit of an angle, the side that you're punching through to is going to get all wavy. Um, so what I do is, I, like we did earlier in the video with a couple other stitch lines, I make just a mark on the inside because it has the most uh, stuff, it has the most layers. This is just straight. So we can kind of punch and make whatever holes we need to. But on the inside, we need to make sure that we're overlapping pockets and stuff correctly. So I mark this out like we did earlier on this line, this stitch line. And then I kind of butt them up like this. And then I'm going to go through and I'm going to mark, making sure that they're pretty much even, the stitch line on the outside. And we're going to do that all the way around. And once we've got everything lining up, we can just go through and punch, and then I'll show you how to glue everything together. It's time for the final glue up. So we're going to glue this one half at a time. And just make sure that you are gluing the correct side. Um, you put, if you put your wallet together, you're not going to glue the same exteriors because the inside of this is meeting up with the inside of this. So what I like to do is I'll put them together like this and then I'll just separate them. And I know 
that I need to glue this side and I need to glue this side so that they'll meet up. So we're going to glue from the last stitch line in the center on the bottom around and up to the top. And same here, we're going to glue from the last stitch around center up to the top. And so when we go to glue this together, what I like to do is I like to line up the holes that you can see here with these holes and then just slide right up to that edge. You can use your finger to feel as a guide and stick it right down and then you want to make sure that this edge here is nice and even and since you laid everything out as long as the edges line up you should be good to go. So we're going to stick this down and then flip it over. And now we're going to sew up this seam. And so now that we've got this side stitched up, we need to glue this side. And we're going to glue along here and along here. Um, the one thing is when the glue is drying, you got to get a little creative. I like to just use my hammer and I put it like that and it keeps the glue all separated and you don't make a mess. And so now we have the whole thing put together. Um, you can see we have the card slots, we have hidden card slots underneath, and we have a nice bill slot here. Um, the last thing to do, we're just going to finish off these edges. The one little tip for this, if you're doing straight edges like this, what I like to do, is I just take a blade and I clip off just a little tiny bit. And then when I go to sand, I'm going to use the drum sander, but you can do it by hand too. It'll sand, it'll make it a nice, it won't totally around the corner, but it just takes off this sort of sharp edge. So I'm going to do this, and uh, we'll come back with the final shots. And here we go. We're all done. Um, we've got our two pockets on the top, we've got our hidden pockets, nice cash lot for bills and receipts and paper. Um, it's a little thick, I, I lined it with like a full three ounce weight, shouldn't have done that. But uh, for a first copy it's it's really good, the design works really well, cards fit nice. And, uh, and that's about it. So thanks for watching. Um, let us know in the comments if, if you like this narrated style. We're gonna, we, we like doing them. They're, they're fun and the response has been great. Uh, let us know what else you want us to cover. And uh, happy crafting.